Hi, in this video, we discuss running mule workloads on OpenShift. We discuss the motivation for running mule workloads on OpenShift. We then install MuleSoft AnyPoint Runtime Fabric on OpenShift, and then follow it up by demoing a sample mule application running on OpenShift. What exactly is the motivation for running mule workloads on OpenShift? For customers, this means they get the flexibility to run mule workloads anywhere OpenShift can be installed, whether it is on-prem or on public cloud provider of their choice, all within their trusted boundaries. And the installation of mule RTF on OpenShift is simplified with the runtime fabric operator. Let us install runtime fabric on OpenShift. As I have an enterprise MuleSoft account, I have the permissions to create a runtime fabric. I'll go ahead and click on create runtime fabric. I'll name it RTF on OpenShift. I'll select OpenShift container platform. Next. The instructions for installation of runtime fabric on OpenShift are provided here. I have a running OpenShift cluster and over there, I'll go ahead and create the namespace. I'll create the full secret needed for pulling the Docker images from the runtime fabric registry. Next, I'll navigate to the operator hub on the web interface. I'll search for runtime fabric and I'll install the runtime fabric operator. The runtime fabric operator has been successfully installed. I'll now navigate to the RTF namespace we created. I'll create an instance of the runtime fabric. The activation data can be obtained from the AnyPoint runtime manager. I'll copy it. The Mule license is the base64 encoded value of the license file you obtained from your Mule representative. And before creating create, I'll create a service account which we can use for running the RTF instance. I'll navigate to the RTF namespace. I'll create the service account which can be used for running RTF. I'll add needed roles. I'll toggle to the YAML view and add the service account which we just created. And we'll go ahead and create the runtime fabric instance. The pods are all running in the RTF namespace. There are no errors in the event logs as well. The RTF uh, instance, it still says ready for activation, but it should be ready in a few minutes. The RTF instance is now active. We can go ahead and associate it with any environment that you want to deploy the applications to. Copy the ingress object from this particular template provided on the GitHub. Copy it to your OpenShift cluster. Make sure you modify the host name to match your cluster. and create the ingress object. The ingress will get reflected on your runtime fabric instance, and you are now ready to deploy applications onto this particular RDF instance. I'll now hand it over to Bharti for demoing a sample Mule app on OpenShift. I'm going to deploy uh, an application which will send uh, HTTP data and convert it to JSON and send it over to uh, running active MQ broker. And we would see that um, queue being uh, created and the message being published onto ActiveMQ Broker. The point to note here is that the ActiveMQ Broker in this scenario is also running on OpenShift in another namespace here in the same cluster. Uh, so as you can see, this is the AMQ Broker. And uh, here we can see the pods running for ActiveMQ Broker. So in our example, we would try to connect to this ActiveMQ Broker from our RTF uh, cr created OpenShift instance or, or project, right? So to do that, so come back uh, to your R runtime manager and click deploy application. Go ahead and uh, fill out the name here. So in our case, we are we'll be sending JSON data to ActiveMQ. So when it comes to deployment target, go ahead and uh, select runtime fabric. This is my RTF instance that got created. And uh, this is uh, again, similar to uh, any mule application, you either 
pick a jar file uh, which is packaged and readily available in exchange or in my scenario i'm going to upload a file from my local disk so this is the application jar that has been built <clears throat> and in this particular example um, i'm going to externalize some properties i have done that in the mu lab as you can see here uh, this is the configuration xml of this particular flow uh, let me show you the flow. So this is listener. There is a JMS publish of type active MQ, right? And there is a logger. So here I'm uh, externalizing the properties of HTTP port, JMS broker URL, username and password. So to supply that uh, externally, you can give them here. 8081 and my broker URL would be the uh, service that is um, running on my OpenShift instance. Let's go ahead here and quickly grab the URL for this. So you go back to your AMQ broker that is running on OpenShift, um, go to your services and in my case it is a TCP based protocol. So I'm going to grab the service URL here, come back and this is uh, running on, uh, listening on 6.6.6. Okay. <clears throat> and the other key that I wanted to give are the JMS credentials. And the nice thing is that you can quickly protect your, uh, uh, you know, sensitive information here by just hitting the protect value, which is which is great, I think. And uh, and the good thing about the RTF operator on OpenShift is that it would create the necessary um, config maps and secrets for you, right? So once I do this, I can go ahead and deploy the application. Okay. So you would see the status slowly change to, you know, applying and then to running. So let, we can go ahead and observe the status on OpenShift instance as well. Go back to the project uh, that is RTF based. As you can see, the service has already been created. Let's quickly check the pod as well. The pod is uh, coming up right now. Okay, so the app is coming up slowly. And uh, meantime, we can show you the uh, config maps that have been uh, created. <coughs> um, so as you can see here, this is a sending JSON to ActiveMQ ML uh, YAML that's been created. And here so you see my HTTP port and the JMS password and username, they've all been mounted as secrets. So if you go to secrets, you can um, see them as well, right? And these are the two values that we, you know, we wanted to mask. So let's quickly check if our pod is up and running. Yes, our application pod for sending JSON to ActiveMQ is up and running, right? <clears throat> These are the deployed logs. So go back to your uh, project and uh, hit the route that has been created, which will expose the HTTP endpoint to outside world. Go ahead and copy that URL. And at this point, you can either use uh, any REST client like Postman in my case, I'm just going to simply use a curl command here, which I've already uh, tried it out earlier. So you can come here and uh, yeah, so uh, post the data that you want to be published onto the queue, right? And yeah, so that's it. So the queue should have the newly created message right now. So you can either ch uh, check the pod logs here at this point, or you can also go back to your um, active MC. Uh, yeah, it is successfully published. We can uh, go check the management console that is running. So this is the console AMQ broker, uh, open DLC. This is running on OpenShift as well, as I've shown you. So you come back to your management console and hit queues. Uh, you see that uh, there's a sales queue and the message count has been increased to two, which was, uh, which was one earlier. So you can even um, browse at this point here. Um, ActiveMQ, all the you know operations that you need to do, you can easily do it from your management console. Thanks, Bharti, for that demo. Feel free to check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks.